We are back once again with a third installment to a list that you guys seem to love, and it's a list that I can't pronounce any names. Scary animations, for the most part we all grew up watching it, be it Lion King, Cinderella, Snow White, Aladdin, however, animation has come a long way since the early days of Disney with its humour and funny faces and has gradually expanded into other genres, especially horror. So today on Top 5 Scary Videos I'm going to be counting down our list of the top 5 scariest animated movies of all time, part 3. Before we begin though be sure to stick around until the end of the video where I'll be responding to some of your comments. Let's jump in. Also sorry for butchering all of these names. Coming in at number 5, Demon City Shinjuku. I think that is correct. Released in 1988, Demon City Shinjuku follows a young warrior Kiyoya who must finish what his father started by battling his way through a city of demons and defeat a diabolic psychic who has opened a portal to hell. Yeah. Fun stuff. Kiyoya's father was killed by Rebi Ra in their battle for the fate of the world, and as a result, the aforementioned portal to hell is made in Shijuku, and the city becomes a literal hell on earth. It's now up to Kiyoya to fight Rebi Ra before he can turn the entire world into a hell. Now, the movie isn't anything special, however, it's the premise which really cements it as one of the greatest animated movies. Now, the reception for the movie wasn't that great, with many claiming that the movie had only vaguely interconnected actions scenes punctuated by some rather dull talkiness, marred by horrible accents. Well, shots fired. Not only that, but I quote, The heroine is unconvincingly British, and the childish psychic speaks with a mangled Mexican drawl. Lol. So weird. However, the film was popular enough to spark a role playing game called The Demon City Shinjuku and was published by Guardians of Order in 2000. Not only that, but Demon City Hunter is a series of 17 manga released in Japan that follows Kiyoya following the events of Demon City. ADV Manga published two of these in English but sadly did not finish them. Coming in at number 4, Wicked City. Released all the way back in 87, Wicked City tells the story of two agents a lady killer human and a voluptuous demon who attempt to protect a signatory to a peace ceremony between the human world and the black world from radicalized demons. The film is based on Black Guard, the first in a series of six novels of the same name, with the film being the solo directorial debut of Yoshiaki Kawajiri, who also served as the character designer, storyboard artist, animation director and key animator. Mad flex. The story itself takes place towards the end of the 20th century and explores the idea that the human world secretly coexists with the demon world, with a secret police force known as the Black Guard protecting the boundary. Now, the film performed well with an average rating of 67% on Rotten Tomatoes, if that means anything to anyone. Most don't trust that site. I do sometimes. Charles Solomon of the LA Times stated, The film epitomizes the sadistic, misogynistic erotica popular in Japan, went on to compliment the director's deft cutting and camera angles, however, the juvenile story left a lot to be desired. Many even went on to compare it to Blade Runner, with the movie seemingly attempting to be the Japanese animation version of the movie, but with a Brave New World subtext, which, if you haven't read that book, get on it immediately. Aldous Huxley is a bloody god. Quote me on that. Like our previous number, the film is good, not extraordinary, but is explicit, sexually charged, and has some incredibly supernatural action storyline. What more could you ask for? Coming in at 3, Dead Space Downfall. Released in 2008, Dead Space Downfall, directed by Chuck Patton, is an animated science fiction horror and the prequel to the video game, Dead Space, taking place during the events of Dead Space Extraction while the necromorphs invade the USG Ishimura after it receives the marker. The story itself, while it's an alien artifact identified as a possible second marker, which is discovered on the planet Aegis 7. Captain Matthews of the nearby USG Ishimura sends a team to bring the artifact to the ship so they can study it, however the crew quickly start dying in truly horrific ways, and as the situation worsens, the head of security, Alyssa Vincent, tries to find the cause of the violence and chaos. The film in turn follows the very first necromorph outbreak, and those suckers are terrifying. If you've ever played the game, you know this already. Now I should say from the off that this film's gore and violence levels are off the charts and has perhaps some of the most memorable kills in not just horror animation, but in horror in 
general. As you progress it feels like you're watching both Alien and Event Horizon simultaneously and that's saying something. The film was quite the hit and sparked a sequel called Dead Space Aftermath which was released in 2011 alongside Dead Space 2. Coming in at 2 Geo Tokyo Fish Attack. Yeah the title alone is absolutely insane I know. Released in 2012 the film follows friends Kiori, Erika and Aki who are on vacation to celebrate their upcoming graduation when suddenly an infestation of mysterious walking fish forces them to reevaluate everything they care about in order to stay alive. The film itself is based off a manga simply called Gyo, also known as Fish Ghastly Squirming. Amazing, which ran from 2001 to 2002. But back to the film, I should say from the off that this film is one hour and ten minutes long, yeah, which is already a slight red flag. But hear me out. Gyo Tokyo Fish Attack is a film that folks either love or hate based simply on if you read the original manga or not. With many upset that the film deviated away slightly from the original story, yet still managed to hold on to the horror elements with a parasitic bioweapon running loose in Japan. The premise itself demands very little thought and is basically just another zombie apocalypse movie and is a horror just to be a horror. However at times it seems it's not quite sure what it's trying to be, beginning as a slasher, then transitioning into a siege film, and then finally Mad Scientist. It's all over the place but for the portion of people that like this movie that is why it's so good. It's a genre riff that keeps you coming back for more. It's fun, bloody and a damn good time. Which is exactly what you want when entering a film about killer fish that can walk. Right. Finally coming in at number 1, Dante's Inferno, an animated epic. Released in 2010 and directed by 7 people, yeah, 7. Dante's Inferno, an animated epic tells the story of Dante as he journeys through the 9 circles of hell, aka my domain. Limbo, gluttony, greed, anger, heresy, violence, fraud and treachery in search of his true love Beatrice. So sweet. The movie even has Mark Hamill as one of the voices which is pretty damn cool. Now the film kicks off with Dante returning home from the crusade to find that his father is dead and his servants slain with his dying wife turning into a spirit. Sad times. However, as she starts to ascend to heaven, Lucifer, that bastard, comes and snatches her away, taking her to the depths of hell, forcing Dante to pursue the nine circles. What makes this movie interesting is that four animation studios, and like I said, seven directors, made Dante's Inferno, which, yes, leads to some animation inconsistencies. However, it plays out beautifully and is a spectacular thing to watch, especially as Dante moves through each layer, with each one having a drastically unique appearance. One of the companies behind the animation film was Film Roman, who also animated Dead Space Downfall, so you know this movie is legit. And as I stated before, the movie is separated into several parts with each chapter animated with a different style. Dante is depicted with different hair length, body proportions and even armour. I'm kind of into that though. The film was well received with the anime news network even gifting it with an overall rating of B-, not too shabby. High school Lucy would have loved that sh**. That high school Lucy got D's. But hey I graduated university so I got a degree come for me. Well there we have it, do you guys agree with our list? Were there any scary animated movies that we missed? Leave us all your thoughts and feelings in the comments down below. Before I go though, I just want to respond to a few comments from one of our last videos, top 5 people who summoned a demon part 2. Mimi Klatsen said how to summon a demon, step 1, don't. Oh come on Mimi, where's the fun in that? Don't you want to summon me? Robert the Dude said I stopped playing with my Ouija board for this. Respect. Diddy Creffield said, Love Lucy, Lucy loves us, we love Lucy, Lucy is queen. All facts. You also sound crazy. Galaxy67 said, It's hard to believe, but it's true. Our dark queen has a kind heart and the face of an angel. If I ever summon a demon, I hope Lucy is the one that shows up. You're still the best. Well, shucks, but don't you dare tell anyone about my sometimes soft side. I don't smile, I can't smile. You won't want to know what will happen if you do. Curses galore. And on that note, if you haven't already, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you never miss another scary vid. Until next time, see you later.